Hey guys, if you've ever worked with impedance matching volume controls, you might have been scratching your head looking at the user chart for proper setting, or maybe you, you do understand it fully, but find that the former is usually pretty common when people ask us how, how do we set these properly. So I'm going to jump right into that and show you. I'm just going to run through a few considerations first, and then we're going to give you an example of a setup. And then based on that example, we're going to determine the proper impedance setting for our volume controls. All right, so some considerations first. You need to know what your amplifier is stable for. Is it eight ohm stable? Is it four ohm stable? That's a very important thing you need to know. Our charts are broken into two segments. We have a chart specifically for eight ohm stable amplifiers. And we also have a chart for four ohm stable amplifiers. So based on what your amplifier can handle, you can look at the appropriate chart for that. Your amplifier's rating is typically going to be outlined in the user manual for the product. Some amplifiers might even have the output simply printed on the back of the product, maybe where the speaker terminals are. If you can't find it, just give the manufacturer a, a shout out and see if they can answer that for you. Um, in the case of raw sound amplifiers, all of our product specs are outlined in the user manual itself, on our website's product page, and in some cases we do have that also printed on the back of the product itself. So that's the first consideration. What is your, sta your amplifier stable for? The next consideration we need to factor in is how many pairs of 4 ohm speakers do we have and how many pairs of 8 ohm speakers do we have. Speakers are usually rated at 8 ohms most commonly, but there are 4 ohm speakers as well, and there are also 6 ohm speakers. So you might have a mix of these, or they might be all one, one rating. But take into consideration what these speakers are. Every single pair of speakers you have, you need to know what they are. Similar to amplifiers power specs, speakers should also have their nominal impedance printed in the manual. Some of them might have that information printed on the actual speaker unit itself, but if you have any questions about that, reach out to the manufacturer of the speaker and find out that, that, um, that value because you need to know that. So those are the two considerations. What's your amplifier stable for and how many pairs of 4 ohm slash 8 ohm speakers do we have? Now, at that point, once we know that, we can look at our chart and we can determine the proper impedance setting on our volume controls. These ALT126Rs have under the faceplate a toggle switch that can be from down to up position. There's four positions. We've got 1x, 2x, 4x, and 8x. 1x is your bypass setting. This means no impedance matching. Whereas 2x, 4x, and 8x are the impedance settings that you would use based on what your needs are make these changes prior to doing any wiring or installation. So before you plug anything in, know what you need to know first based on those previous considerations and then look at our chart, find the right value, set it, then you can plug it in and turn it on. All right, so we're gonna outline an example here. We have an eight ohm stable amplifier. We have three pairs of eight ohm speakers. How do we set our volume controls? I'm gonna show you. So remember, 8 ohm stable amp, three pairs of 8 ohm speakers. Because our amplifier is only 8 ohm stable, it's not stable down to 4 ohms, we're going to look at the chart here for impedance matching for 8 ohm amplifiers. The first thing we need to determine is how many pairs of 8 ohm speakers do we have, which we know that, it's three pairs. So we're gonna start by looking at this chart on the very top row here where it's labeled 8 ohm speaker pairs. And as you can see, going left to right in this top row, we've got zero all the way to eight. You'll also know, notice going down in the column here, the first column, we have a similar mention. This one is for four ohm speaker pairs. And it's in a similar fashion, it's going down from zero to four. So we're going to just find our, our right numbers and we're going to see where the numbers intersect on the chart. So let's go with four ohm pairs first, I guess that, that's the easy one. How many forum pair of speakers do we have? We have none, not in this example at least. So let's look at this. Going down the column, zero pairs, one pair, two pair, three pair, four pair of forum speakers. And what do we have for forum pairs? 
zero. So this is where we can start. Now going across the row here, now we count how many eight ohm pairs of speakers we have. Do we have zero pairs of eight ohm speakers? No. Do we have one? No. Do we have two? No. Do we have three? Yep, that's the magic number. We have three pairs of eight ohm speakers. So let's see where these two intersect. Three pairs of eight ohm speakers and zero pairs of four ohm speakers, they intersect at four X. So this would be the appropriate setting for our three ALT126R volume controls. And now we have essentially set it and forget it, and we have a safe load running on that amplifier. So you would take that in consideration for any of your installations that are using multiple pairs of speakers and you need impedance matching. Whether you're looking at four ohm amplifiers or eight ohm amplifiers, we have the chart for you here and everything outlined. If you have any questions with a setup though, be sure to contact Russ Sound via phone or email. Thank you for watching.